A very good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and good evening. How's everyone doing today? We got a, I got a very important question to ask each and every one of you. Have you enjoyed your food and dining experience here on the beautiful Sun Princess? Let's hear it! Well, today we've got a very special treat for you, courtesy of our wonderful food and beverage team. It's the culinary demonstration here. There's going to be two gentlemen I'm going to introduce momentarily, but it is a huge operation. It takes some very talented people to run this operation, starting with a man that is making you pinch an inch now that you didn't have when you first came on board. He is also recognized for the orange ribbon and glistening medallion around his neck. Preparing over 15,000 meals a day, alone. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for your award-winning executive chef from Italy, Giuseppe! Yes, you are! I'm a pizza pilot! Good morning, chef! Buongiorno, as they Buongiorno. say. Buongiorno. Yes. Buongiorno. A very good morning to you, my friend. Uh, a very busy man, probably one of the most popular men on the ship. How's he doing? Does he do a great job? Yeah. Yes. Uh, let's get to know you a little bit. Uh, we know you are from Italy. Whereabouts in Italy? I'm from Bari. Bari is the center south of Italy on the Adriatic coast. Anybody been there? Yeah. Oh, a few of you. Very nice. <laughs> How long have you been an, uh, an executive chef for with Princess Cruises? Okay, in total uh, years in, with Princess, I'm towards 32 years. Oh. And of course, I've since 2001. Since 2001, and you do a fantastic job. How many people work with you? How many cooks do we have? 175 people. 175 work together with our wonderful chef. And each and every day, uh, I've had the pleasure of actually going to one of the galleys. How many galleys do we have on board? Well, we have, uh, first of all, we have the two big galleys, Mengali 5 and Mengali 6. Then, of course, we have our crew galley. Then, of course, we have our Kai Sushi. We have the Shell Restaurant. We have a galley of um, room service. Then another galley is up on deck uh, 14 amongst the two buffet line. Another very small galley is up on deck 15. Then, of course, we have the International uh, Cafe. We have the Burger Bar. And I think I mentioned everything. I think that's it. Yeah, I think that's good. Fantastic. Well, uh, thank you very much. You do a fantastic job. And uh, you also work hand in hand with another gentleman, probably one of the busiest men on the ship. Anywhere to do with dining, from the Marquis Dining Room to the Regency Dining Room, and all the venues that our wonderful chef set as well, with the galleys come, of course, the dining experience. Ladies and gentlemen, he's your favorite. He's our favorite. Please put your hands together for our maitre d'hôtel, Michael! Good morning, Victor D. How are you? How are you? Fantastic. Always a pleasure to see both of you gentlemen. Very hardworking and doing a fantastic job. Let's get to know you first. Where are you from, Victor Originally from Cape Town, South Africa. Very nice. Anybody been to Cape Town? It's a beautiful, beautiful place. And uh, how long have you been our wonderful Victor D with Princess Cruises? How long have you been? Victor D. 33 years. 33 years. <laughs> And uh, how many people do you have working with you, the service staff? 178. 178? <laughs> no, really, 178. Oh, really? It's the yeah. exact number? Wow. 178. So just a few more than the chef? Yes. Just a few. Three more. But between us, we have the biggest apartment on board. Yes, indeed. Don't they do a great job? Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear for our wonderful Major D, our award-winning executive chef. Now, there's some food up here, and I see that there's things already going on. This smells fantastic. Can you smell that? It is unreal, and they're going to take you beyond the regions of culinary space right here. So without further ado, I'm going to leave it over to our wonderful maitre d' and our executive chef, and I believe you have some dishes aside set for me to go wash. Is that right? We'll see. We'll see. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for our wonderful maitre d' and executive chef. Thank you, Thank you. All right, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. And morning so we are here to entertain you for about an hour so we are going to show you how to prepare this very simple plate well they're not so simple but in the way we prepare the plate also is not illustrating our cookbook which Michael loved and we spend a few words so we're going to prepare four recipes this morning the first recipe will be farfalle in salsa rustica then we're going to prepare the scarbola bourguignon and then we're going to prepare shrimp tequila 
And then we invite here our chief best to put all together one of the most famous cake, which is the black forest cake. Okay, let's start. First recipe, pasta. We of course, you need some, a boiling water. Some salt. A little salt before you put uh, the pasta in, and then go straight with pasta. Okay, it's very important when you cook the pasta, ladies and gentlemen, remember, as long as you put the pasta inside, you need to stir it a little bit. Then occasionally, every 20, 30 seconds, you still continue to stir it until your, your pasta is ready. Of course, to prepare the, the sauce. Excellent, thank you. It's working. Some extra virgin olive oil. Yeah, we start with extra virgin olive oil. Okay, Mark, yeah, thank you. So here I have a selection of uh, vegetable, meat, I'm gonna, meanwhile I, I'm gonna put on, I will explain to you. So first step, a little chopped garlic, and I'm gonna add some shallot onions. As you can see, finely chopped. It's very important. As thin as you can. Very important to have here as well, with, when you're cooking with extra virgin olive oil, you don't want to take it up to an extreme high heat. You want to keep it at a medium heat. You still want to keep the natural goodness of the olive oil um, and preserve it. When you take it to a high heat, where it starts to burn, you lose that, that uh, healthy ingredients and of course it becomes quite toxic. What we're doing right now is we're just uh, sweating the, the um, chopped onions and the garlic. Just want to soften it up a little. So at this stage, after both ingredients already sweat a little bit and come in a golden color, I'm adding the meat. It's a strip of veal. This is extremely tender meat. Basically as long as it's turned already in the white color, basically it's already cooked ready to eat. Of course now we are going to add all the rest of the ingredients until we reach the, the, complete, the complete sauce. As you can see the meat is already turned in a white color. Now I'm going to add the mixture of uh, fresh sage and rosemary. Just a little because it's a strong uh, flavor. And now I'm going to add some Madeira. Or if you have Marsala, if you use the Marsala, use the dry one. Michael, a little bit more, please. Don't worry. It's pain. I have to save some for later. <laughs> so, like Madeira or Marsala. Marsala, as you know, we have two kinds of Marsala. We have the dry one and the sweet one. So, use the dry one. The sweet one, which we use in the pastry. So, we allow the Madeira to evaporate a little bit, so it's already reduced like for half, and then we add all the rest of the ingredients. Starting from the gravy sauce, this is veal gravy. Of course the gravy is made not by powder, but we do our own gravy on board. We use the bones, vegetable, according to what is the gravy you are looking for. If it's beef, if it's veal, it's poultry, it's fish, whatever. We always use our own, basically from the scratch. We don't use any powder on board. Then I'm going to add the, the morel mushroom. This one of the most expensive ingredient. This one, of course, they are the dry one. Of course, this, uh, you need to soak in uh, hot water for a few minutes. Then you take out from there, you squeeze a little bit, and then you proceed to chopping down a little bit. 900 bucks a pound. Yeah. Moral Indeed. mushrooms. Then of course we have this um, green peas. The green peas if you have frozen, you just let them defrost. In case I uh, use the fresh one, then you need to blanch them in uh, boiling water for a few seconds. So you can see it's quite easy. It's only matter to put all the ingredients inside in sequence. And the very last ingredient I'm going to put is some of the cream. Basically, the sauce is ready. Now, for the pasta, for sure, it's, um, it's almost no, done. No, 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 no. So, we spend a minute to just to spend the pasta. Usually, it's uh, an item is very delicate. So, when in this case, we're cooking the pasta, I mix with sauce and ready to go. Some people, for some reason, they want to save some time, they cook the pasta in advance. And the big mistake they do to cool down the pasta, they do on the running water. Please don't do so, because if you do this, it means you wash out everything, the fi fiber, vitamin, everything goes out. 
So to, if you want to cook the pasta in advance, yes, you cook the pasta, you remove a couple of minutes before, basically to the bite. You just put in any container, a few drops of olive oil, remove it a little bit, a little pasta there. At the moment you are going to mix again with sauce. You keep the original water and uh, bring, bring the water to a point of boil again. Then you image again the pasta inside for a few seconds, even three, four seconds is enough. Drain up again and mix. You have a perfect pasta. Okay, so, I think the pasta is not done too. Maybe one more spoon. Of course, pasta, for our information, I think we have over 300 shapes of pasta. You can have one pasta every day, different <coughs> pasta. And of course, each pasta has different cooking time. When you buy the package of pasta on the back, it always tells you how many minutes it has to cook. In this case, the farfalle will be between 7 and 8 minutes. There are some pasta that cook in 4 minutes, there are some pasta that cook in 12 minutes. For an instance, the bucatini, for example, you have 12 minutes. If you take the spaghetti, the angel air, even three minutes already. So it's important to know the, how many minutes you need required to cook the pasta. All right. Now, as you can see, the pasta, you still have to remove, even now we go straight to serve, you remove the pasta still to the bite, because now we are going to be another minute or two inside the sauce, so the pasta is still cooking a little bit more and so until you mix everything then you add a little parmesan cheese in this case to, uh, to make to enhance more the flavor and then just mix all together and then we are ready to go nice plate here as you can see the, the pasta is perfectly coated with sauce it's not so thick it's not so liquid it's just Perfect as as it can be. A little bit of cream that we added just binded all the ingredients together, creating that nice thick texture. Okay, so we will come a little pepper, and then final one. Add a little bit more Parmesan cheese, and of course the last sign is always a little bit green, some chopped parsley. And buon appetito. Alright. Now we move on the second recipe. This recipe is divided in two parts. First of all I'm going to cook the escargot. And then the second part I'm going to prepare the butter cafe de Paris. So you can see I have already some butter here, which I take out from the fridge a while ago to allow the butter to become soft. So then you are able to whisk a little bit and we can let the butter become a little bit foamy. And then we're going to add all the ingredients inside. But now I go, go back to escargot, to how cook the escargot. So Mike again a little bit extra virgin olive oil. If you for some reason you don't like the extra virgin olive oil, you want to go with the butter, also you can use butter. So as per recipe, I'm going with extra virgin olive oil. This of course you have some more ingredient here so we start to add some uh, no this one onions and then some celery and carrots again as we did before we let all the ingredients sweat a little bit I want to reach a nice golden color. Now we add also a couple of leaves of bay leaves. And then we are going to add the snail. Now the snail, of course, what we have on board, this comes already in can. It means they are already purified, blanched, and ready to go. If you ever experience to buy the fresh one, you need to keep you keep in your uh, kitchen make sure you put some cover on the top because if you don't do that you're gonna have your kitchen all over the escargot <laughs> right so you need to keep cover all the time otherwise buy the one in the can which are perfect ready to go so also this is quite simple although we have so many ingredients to prepare this recipe here. 
So this doesn't require too long because the escargot are already cooked, so it's only matter to, to combine all the ingredients. So we need to put a nice amount of red wine. All right. At this stage, we add also some gravy, some beef gravy or veal gravy. Both of them they are indicated for this recipe. And at this time, I add also a little bit of uh, fresh thyme. Okay, now we let uh, reduce it a little bit, the juice. Meanwhile, I will prepare the butter. So to prepare the butter, again, we need soft butter. I'm going to add all the ingredients inside, starting from shallow tonio, then of course garlic, parsley, and a little Dijon mustard, one spoon would be enough for this amount, Tabasco, well, if you want to have so spicy or little spicy, it depends on your taste. Some lean perry or Chester sauce. Wow. And uh, a little pernot. Pernot. But it's just a very drop. French, <laughs> just, yeah, just drop. because it's very strong. All right, good. Okay, I don't have any salt here. This is basically all the ingredients you need to prepare this butter. It's called Café de Paris. Just need to do is mix all together. Actually, one more last ingredient, which is the egg yolk. Egg yolks. Does anybody know how many eggs we go through in a day? <laughs> Just on the fresh eggs, we go through approximately 4,000 fresh eggs. And that's just for our guests, besides the baking and the pastries and the breads. 4,000 eggs per day times seven days, 28,000 fresh eggs. And guess what? They're talking about fresh eggs. Fresh eggs. We use what? only fresh eggs. One, oh, okay. one chicken. <laughs> And a skinny cow. You know, let's see. <laughs> we use 4,000 eggs fresh a day. This, of course, mainly they go for the breakfast for over easy poached. Or, but in total, I would like to need, we need at least 12,000 eggs per day, if I'm including everything. Of course, we, we are working here with pasteurized eggs. So the pasteurized eggs come in whole eggs, white eggs, or egg yolks. This, of course, is mainly using all of the other the rest of the department. So if I have to use fresh eggs every day, our need for according to the number of passengers and crew would be twelve thousand a day. So then it would require one more chicken mac. <laughs> <laughs> that one has seen better days. <laughs> okay Mr. excuse me, the escargot already, the pattern is ready. Now I'll show you how to combine all together. Of course for this we have this uh, special dish. And what we need to do is just place one, it depends how big are, usually one it's, it's enough, but here small, maybe you can place even two, along with some sauce. See, I'll turn it one and two. Very important to put a little sauce as well. And then the remaining space we're going to fill up with this butter. Now this is almost, it's not final yet. Now we need to cook the, the escargot. Yeah, so to cook the escargot, you need to preheat the oven. Remember, so whatever you have to cook in the oven, always preheat the oven. Do not put anything in the oven, the oven is just open cold. So preheat the oven, takes about 5 minutes to reach the temperature. This would be around 165 Celsius degree. And then it takes about 5-6 minutes. Ah, you brought the oven here this morning also. You have the oven here. Wow! 6 minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, we are second ready. So this, this is what they come out from the oven. As you can see, they are nice, 
Say that you eat the butter. This, of course, when you come home, is very, very extremely hot. So I need to wait a, a couple of minutes before you, you start to bite the first bite. Why you have to your tongue? All right. Let's move on to the next and final recipe from my side. Also, this is a very interesting recipe. It's called shrimp tequila. And I would suggest at home, if you are, as long as you are able to collect all this vegetable, and try this recipe. It's very, very particular flavor. Okay, we start again with some extra virgin olive oil. Okay. Again, I start with the garlic. And this time we have fresh chili jalapeno. Any chili, ladies and gentlemen, need to pay um, particular attention. Although the recipe tells you the exactly amount you need to put inside according to the amount of you are preparing for two, three, five, six person. I suggest always to put a little bit less what is the the, the recommendation of the amount because chili sometimes it can be more spicy than what, what you believe, <coughs> particularly the dry one. So my suggestion is always put a little bit less. At the end of the recipe you test if it's not so spicy, you may still add a little bit more. On the other end, if sometimes it's so spicy then you are not able to eat. So then it's your choice to what you're gonna do. All right, so again, very important, the first, this is the first step, don't rush, let the, get the ingredient sweat a lot or become like golden color, and then you can proceed with the rest of them. Um, increase a little bit the speed here. Yeah? Okay. Now, I'm adding the shrimp. Prawns. Prawns. <laughs> It's very important with the prawns that you just seal them. All you want to do is just cook, seal them on the outside. You don't want to cook them for too long. And then uh, while you're searing them, you're adding all the other ingredients. Uh, as soon as they turn this nice orangey color on the outside, pretty much ready. So we're going to be adding the rest of the ingredients while the prawns are serving. This is, of course, is one of the dishes you need to be fast when you cook. You don't need to stay longer cooking. And what, most important, once, it's, once the dish is ready, you need to be served. This is one of these that it cannot be there waiting for some time. Ready, ready to go. Because in this case you will enjoy the, the sides, the flavor, everything. You let this dish stay longer there, you basically ruin everything. Because the ship that will become smaller, all the protein that will go out, that will become tough, basically destroy the, the plate. Okay, now it's blinking a little bit. Have a bit of fire 18, 12, 5. Okay, time to make the shrimp happy. So a little tequila, that's why it's called shrimp tequila. Okay. Uh, at this point you can add a little fire to it. Obviously you won't try this at home first. You'd rather try this in the neighbor's house and if it works you can try it. <laughs> but you can flame it over here right now and you can create a little show in front of everybody. Anyway, just a little attention. If you flame with the bottle at home, so here this is an induction, there is already no open flame. If you work with the open flame, as long as you put the alcohol inside and the pan, you already get blow the fire up. But be careful when you use the bottle, always you do like this, put the bottle here, the liquid, and then you go here. Don't go with the bottle here, huh? <laughs> you may have a different uh, result. Uh, we don't even want to go forward about that. Different so a little white wine also, as per recipe. And now it's only matter to add all the rest of the ingredients, starting from tomato con cassé. This is fresh tomato that you need to remove the, <coughs> the skin and basically take only the external part, so it means no seeds inside. A little cilantro or coriander. Then of course the Tomato sauce, beautiful red tomato sauce. Tomato sauce, there are so many ways you can do tomato sauce. You can use the fresh tomato, you can use tomato in the can, you can combine together, you can make separate. You can cook the tomato with only onion, you can cook tomato with only garlic, you can cook tomato with celery, carrot, onion, like Napoletana style. You can combine all these things. So whatever is more, best test for you, you do. 
It's very important when you make the, the tomato sauce, <coughs> make sure at the end, before you remove it from the stove, add some chopped fresh basil as long as you have available. This will enhance the flavor. Sometimes, maybe in winter time, it's hard to find the basil. But if you, if you do in the summer time when you have plenty basil, you may want to dry up. And once it's very dry, you crush it, you keep in a small container, seal it, you can have all winter fresh basil. Yes. Mm -hmm. But now, of course, today, as per today, you, you found basil all year long because, you know, they collect around the world, so it's more easy to find. One of the very last ingredients, a touch of cream, because we want to keep this dish on the red side. Just bearing in mind as well with the tomato sauce, you'll find that sometimes when you're buying canned or whole peeled tomatoes, you find the tends to be a little acidic, and you want to break down that acidic flavor. Just add a little bit of carrots and celery, and that will break down the slight acidity that you tend to find in tomato sauce. And the very last thing here, the see is segment of lime. This, of course, no need to cook. I'm just adding inside. I turn off here. I stir it one more time, and then we are ready to go. So you can see the sauce is nice, beautiful orange color. It's not so white, it's not so red, it's what as per recipe. This dish you can present it, like in this case, I prepare this bed of um, yellow rice pilla made with saffron, or you can prepare some fresh pasta, such as fettuccine or pappardelle, just you need to plunge it in uh, boiling water, saute with a little bit of butter, and then prepare a bed on the plate, and then you go on top with shrimp. This also the, it's a very nice presentation when you collect everything in the center. So I'm gonna put like five pieces of shrimp, four, one on the top, a little sauce, and then I'm gonna create three spots around with sauce and the segment of lime. So one, two, and three. Now, a little bit more cilantro, the chopped one. And of course, if you have some cilantro leaves, yes, we have here. Fresh one. So this, uh, as you can see, we, we keep in the water. Basically, become nice and fresh, it's like alive. Go. And more appetito. Ladies and gentlemen, all these recipes that we've been preparing for you this morning are all beautifully displayed and illustrated in our beautiful culinary courses cookbook that we actually started about 13 years ago. And today we actually have combined all the menus that we use throughout the fleet, throughout the various destinations in the world, and we put them all together in this beautifully illustrated cookbook. Now this cookbook is really nice because the recipes are so easy and so versatile to actually do, and you have these beautiful illustrations of the menu, of the various dishes. Now, it's a great souvenir or a gift for friends or family for those of you who like cooking at home. It sells for a wonderful value of only $42.25. So if anybody is interested in purchasing this cookbook, then it will be available in the Marquee Dining Room straight after the presentation this morning, in the Marquee Dining Room, deck number five in the atrium. Um, and then what we'd like to do is, of course, all these wonderful dishes are nothing without a great dessert. So we're going to be okay. welcoming on, on stage our... Uh, Chief Pastry Chef, of course, who works very, very hard, 24-hour operation. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Our executive chief pastry chef now. We have a new position on morning. How are you okay, Ricky? So this is our sweet man. And of course, remember, wherever you go to eat around the ship, no matter where, all the pastry come from his department. So the pastry shop here on this ship is located on deck six together with the Mangali Five. And from there they spread all around the desert. They are working 18 person with him, and 14 person work on the daytime, and four person work on the night time. Basically on the night time they, the the pastry chefs they prepare whatever he order. It means all the hard stuff like all the sponge, all the patachu, all the puff pastry. Uh, some of the cream and then in the morning when another 14 person join the meeting uh, they join the best they start you know, to cut to fill it to assemble and produce thousand and thousand and thousand and thousand <laughs> pieces of pastry to distribute all day long in all the venue Horizon Court, International, Share 
uh, crew as well. Also crew, huh? You enjoy too much, yeah, yes, it's true, all right, we, we can 